We've been in Saudi Arabia now for 17 days and stage 10 starts and finishes in the ancient locale of Al-Alua. The ancient landscape with its mountainous peaks, rocky outcrops and endless sand dunes makes it a place you wouldn't want to be stranded. Its beauty, but harsh environment, makes it the perfect location for the Dakar Rally. In stark contrast, the bivouac stands out as a massive temporary city in the middle of the desert landscape. It moves from location to location, providing the base for each night's stopover, allowing the teams to prepare the cars for the next day's competition. For Glenn and Dahl, it was another challenging day. Glenn, day 10 of the Dakar. Not the best one for you. You've struggled and fought out there again today. Now, as I said, I'm getting the full Monty experience for Dakar, so no, I'm still loving it. And we did have a really good run at, at the first 115 k's, and it just started to overheat. And uh, yeah, we so we made it to the checkpoint at 173, and another 200 k is a bit too risky, and we we don't have a lot to play for. I want to be able to go out tomorrow, so best to fix it. I suppose though, your momentum is a big part of any kind of motorsport, isn't it? And you know, it's a bit stop-start for you this week. Is that a little bit frustrating? Uh, it's not too bad. Like Every day we go out and we go, right, oh, new day, we'll have a crack. And, and it always seems to start out really strong. And uh, I've said to Dale, you know, like you get some of those dunes or some of those sand tracks and you, you nail them. And it's a bit like a game of golf. You think, how yeah, good am I? And then you hit the next hump and... Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm not so good, but uh, it's it's not too bad. It's just the um, as soon as you have that problem, uh, and then like for, for the last 50 k's, for example, today when it was overheating, you tend to have more near misses when you're driving at 60 percent than 100 percent. So sometimes better to pull out and uh, have another crack tomorrow. Oh, it's a heck of an experience, isn't it, Dale? Uh, you know, you have had to work quite a lot in the car. Physically, that must be quite demanding for the two of you. Uh, physically, not too bad. Okay. It mentally is the bit that, that yeah. sort of gets you. Um, and anyone will tell you, you know, in the rally style that we're used to, doing Super Rally or Rally 2, all that sort of stuff, and rejoining is hard mentally. Um, so in the stage, you've got to regroup. And Glenn and I are positive people, so we just sort of try and get back on with it as quick as we can. And yeah, that's what we've been doing. 300 metres straight across the tracks from stage one. Straight across tracks from stage one. They'll be cutting across this we get it straight. Yep. 100 metres. That's it. Yep. Staying on this. Still the cap of 85. I love the fact that you're still smiling and you're still loving it and you're still looking forward to tomorrow's challenge. I mean, the Dakar just gets you like that, doesn't it? You know, as you say, it's a bit like golf. You just want to get better and do more. Well, yeah, when we got to sort of day four, it was like, wow, we've still got another eight days to go. And But now we're at day 10, I'm like, well, we've only got two left. We need to really start to sort this out. So, no, I'm still excited. I'm, my main aim as soon as we had the issue today was we need to get these next two days in. So, no, I'm happy as. Comfortable they're going to sort that car for tomorrow, boys? Yeah, look, we, we keep driving past people in the stages, and even if we're limping through at the time, however the situation is for us, we look at them and think, you know, we're not in that bad of a situation. And some poor buggers are still back there with office jobs at home, aren't they? So we're still having the time of our lives. This is not a bad office, is it? If you want an office, look around, it's not bad at all. No, nah, it's terrible. I need to go back home and <laughs> pay to do it again, work up some money to do it again. But no, nah, it's uh, been a lot of fun. Good luck tomorrow. It's a testing day tomorrow. What do you know about the stage tomorrow, Glenn? Uh, we're going to go for the, it's mostly gravel stages, so a bit of rally stuff, so it might be nice. It's, I'm a bit more comfortable with that. I seem to go all right in the dunes, but I feel better on the gravel, so mostly gravel tomorrow. It's been a joy watching you out in the stages, boys. I actually caught up with you yesterday. I was standing on top of a dune, and I spotted the Aussie flag, and it was, you were moving. You were motoring, that is for sure. It doesn't matter, you know, these, uh, what class are you in? You're the SSV Challenger class? Yeah. They still move across those dunes, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they're great in the dunes. That's actually where we pick up most of our time, even with the T1s and T1 Pluses, is in the dunes. Yeah, they smoke us on the flats, but the rest is pretty good. I enjoyed watching you yesterday, boys. The best of luck tomorrow.